many listening will have heard uh, that COVID vaccines saved one million lives. No, wait, it's actually three million, correction, and and reduced hospitalizations by like 18 million. I think this is the U.S. only, or is this That is the one? U.S. only. U.S. That, only. That is the claim. Um, and uh, for instance, new study, I just took off the person tweeting it because I don't, she doesn't need to be dragged for this in particular, although she should really wake up since she claims to be a medical doctor. New study out shows that COVID-19 vaccines have averted over 3 million deaths, 18 million hospitalizations, and saved $1 trillion in medical costs in the U.S. And it's a link to uh, an article at commonwealthfund.org. Hold on. Um, two years and um, commonwealthfund.org, two years of U.S. COVID-19 vaccines have prevented millions of hospitalizations. So I actually have, Zachary, a PDF of that to show where I've got some stuff highlighted. Let me just make it uh, full screen here. Okay, you can show it now. So this is uh, a PDF. We'll also link to the, link to the article on the web. Uh, this is the research in question. This is the research that finds that 3 million deaths in the U.S. have been averted with these vaccines and 18 million hospitalizations and saved a trillion dollars. Okay, and it's out of, uh, it's, you know, University of Maryland and Yale and um, Yale School of Public Health and all sorts of important places. Well. Yes, this research, how, how, how pray tell, did they, uh, did they manage to wrestle this pattern from the data? Yeah, well, as it turns out, this is literally a blog post. So let's just, let's just start there. Like yeah. you know, I'm burying the lead here, but this is literally a blog post. Now, this thing has now been cited by, well, apparently Anthony Fauci himself. This research is now the biggest news in how amazing the COVID vaccines are. This is literally a blog post. This is from the same category of people, the same class of people who throughout COVID when many of us have been talking about papers on preprint servers that haven't yet been peer reviewed, oh, you can't talk about that because until it's been peer reviewed, it's not real science. This is a blog post. There aren't even any references. It's not even that they didn't include the references, but they clearly have them. There aren't even any references. Okay, so this ain't research. They may have done research, and we're, we're going to get to what, in fact, they claim to have done, but this is all that is available that all of the headlines and all of the doctors online are referring to is a report in which all of the actual stuff that was done is completely opaque. That's not how science works. Okay, so two connections. One, we've seen this trick before. Oh, so many right? times. So many times. The TOGETHER trial, right? We had a slide from a yes. presentation for more than half a year before mm -hmm. they even showed us the method section, which then took experts weeks to unpack. But it's the Yale School of Public Health. Oh, what well. could go wrong? I mean, come on. These, these are the experts. These are the authorities. I'm sure they've got glassware. I'm <laughs> sure they've got lab coats. I know they've got the relevant oh, degrees. Oh, I'm not sure they have any of those things. I know what they've got, though. Grant money. Um, so can we show uh, the clip of Anthony Fauci referring to this piece of research? Before we get to what it yeah, actually says. Yeah, I, I think it's kind of yeah, the right order to do it. Excellent. Yes, let's do it. So well, Zach has that? Yeah. But the latest now, Dr. Fauci, is Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. He's now asking the Florida Supreme Court to greenlight an investigation into, and the way he put it, is any uh, any and all wrongdoing in Florida with respect to COVID-19 vaccines. What's your reaction to that? I don't have a clue, Kate, what he's asking for. I mean, we have a vaccine that unequivocally is highly effective and safe and has saved literally millions of lives. The Commonwealth Fund has come out with a report just this past week that vaccinations that have been administered over this period of time, this last year and a half to two years, has saved 3.2 million lives, 18 million hospitalizations, and approximately $1 trillion in costs. So what's the problem with vaccines? I mean, vaccines are life-saving. So quite frankly, Kate, I'm not sure what, what they're trying to do down there. It kind of gets at a bigger issue I've been wanting to ask you as um, in one of our final interviews um, in, in your role in public health is just the re one result of the pandemic has sadly been that science has become a divisive topic, politicized and weaponized by some people. Have you thought about how do you pull that back? 
How do you turn that around? You know, Kate, if I had an easy answer, I, I, I'd give it to you, but it's a very difficult situation. You're absolutely correct. It has been politicized, and it has been politicized in a way that has actually caused lives, because if people don't get... All right, so that was Anthony. So unfortunately, I haven't seen that, and I, with the way we have things set up, I couldn't hear it, so I don't know what he said. So and that was Anthony Fauci um, in response to the question about what Governor DeSantis is doing with his call for a grand jury. Mm -hmm. uh, that is Anthony Fauci saying, I don't know what Ron DeSantis is up to. The vaccines have saved, you know, a report out this week says the vaccines have saved uh, more than three million lives. Do so you know what they actually did? I do. <laughs> they, uh, they took the assumption that vaccines save lives and they plugged that into their model. And then they said, now let's imagine a universe with vaccines that save lives and without vaccines that save lives and see if at the end of that running of that simulation, the universe in which the vaccines, which do save lives, have saved lives, like it, at the end of the simulation, are more lives saved in a universe in which vaccines that save lives exist? Or are there more lives saved in a world without vaccines that do save lives? We, they started with the conclusion, which well, we've also seen over and over and over again. And then they, voila, acted surprised when out popped their results. So in a model, which is not data, right? they plugged in an assumption which would automatically give them an astronomical number for the number of lives saved. So pers pers specifically, just in terms of what they did, Zach, if you would show my screen again, this again, the so-called research that everyone is alluding to, the, the thing that is not a research paper in any way, at the very end, there's a how we conducted this study section, which in a normal paper would be right after the introduction, between the introduction and the results, and would actually spell out precisely what was done and would reference all of the claims that are in any way not general knowledge already. How we conducted the study at the end of this blog post is them saying basically what I just said, and then vaccine efficacy is against infection and symptomatic and severe disease for different vaccine types for each variant and by time since vaccination were drawn from published estimates. That's it. Right. That is the evidence. That is. And, and we don't even know what the published estimates are. Well. Like, th this is, this is beyond scientific malpractice. Yes. This is, this is complete insanity and is being, you know, all the CNN viewers are now convinced that St. Fauci has spoken the word of God because the Yale School of Public Health has just done this research, which no, like they did something for sure, but they put out a blog post in which they buried the actual thing that they did by saying that their evidence that these vaccines are effective was drawn from published estimates. What estimates were those? How were those gathered? And were they themselves accurate? That is what we need to know to know if the vaccine saved lives. They, didn't, they did not assess anything to do with whether or not the vaccines actually saved lives here. Right. Now, I would, there have been a number of good analyses of this, and they have discovered where the bodies are buried here or not buried, as the case may be. Meaning they have, they have actually found the references? They have found the model on which these things are built, because this is, of course, the second report from this group. And so there's a history of... Right. The model on which it's built is one thing, but like the... the, the, the Estimates. I would point okay. people to Brett Swanson's uh, Substack. He's a data analyst who has been excellent on uh, on questions regarding COVID, and he reveals that this model, in this case, requires an estimate of the number of people who would have died from COVID that consistently exceeds the maximum number that ever did on a daily basis. Right. So they have simply taken an absurd number in light of a. Uh, it, okay, but that but that's a different question. I mean, that's, that's a different problem with the model, right? The, the problem that I'm pointing out is they, they have made the claim that the vaccines save lives. Right. Like, far aside from the actual research that we can see that they did here, which is, um, which is given that we started with the assumptions that we can't, we won't tell you exactly how, to, how we made them and exactly the nature of what they were, but now let's start with these, these, these models of, 
of sort of the population and such. That that's the level you're talking about because that is transparent-ish if you know how to read this blog post. Right now, what you're saying is, and I totally agree with this. That this is a this is fraud because it's being yeah. done by people who understand why you can't do this. This isn't high school students, right? These right. are presumably people who have study the data sets and know what you can and cannot do. And what I, they, I wouldn't have passed this paper if it came to me in, at, in, right, as a college Because class. No, no it way. doesn't matter what level of study you're at, this is perfectly circular. What they did is they told a model that these were highly effective vaccines at saving lives, right. and then they asked them whether they were highly effective at saving lives. It's perfectly circular. Yes. Now, if you, for those of us who saw that clip of Fauci on CNN saying, basically parroting this as if it was a result, which it is not. Right. It is a model, right? For somebody like Fauci to invoke that number taken from this source tells you something that many people have been uh, reluctant to accept. Mm. This is a knowing lie, mm. right? Dr. Fauci has plenty of training and a tremendous amount of experience. He knows the difference between this and a, re a result that shows that this has happened. So I actually, like, with the amount of skepticism that I've had to keep actively on board for the last three years now, I really thought I'm missing something. Like this blog post is linking. Like I, I, and I still hope I'm wrong. Like where is the research, guys? It's well, but it's it's not here. But okay, take the alternative hypothesis, which is that from whatever point it happened, there was some idea of what we were going to do, and from that point, every decision has been subordinated to whether it supports that plan or argues against it. And so, any piece of evidence that would get in the way of your vaccinate everyone program mm -hmm. has been uh, obscured and every uh, result, no matter how garbagey, no matter how circular, no matter how much it is based on models that are not actually evidence of anything, it is, it is promoted to the very highest levels, yeah. right? To have Anthony Fauci on CNN say a knowing lie and it can't be anything else. Incompetence does not explain why somebody with a full career's worth of experience in this yeah. exact field would parrot a result this dumb. He's a lot of things, but dumb bunny he ain't. He ain't a dumb bunny. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then, but the, this result, you've probably seen it. You and I have not been together since this result came out. We've yeah. been in separate places, but I've seen it in many, many different places. Everybody on the blue team is championing this as like, see, we were right. New data. Right. No, actually, no new data at all. This is actually a good moment to reveal that Tony is in fact our Lord and Savior. If you could show my screen here, this editor-in-chief of Science Magazine this week published this editorial in Science. The headline is, thank you, Tony. Okay, so he, <laughs> The editor-in-chief of Science Magazine, one of the two premier science journals in the world, uh, has done an interview with Tony Fauci, and he's just put some of the highlights into this thing, and then you can go listen. I have not. Uh, you can go listen to the whole interview if you like. Um, Anthony Fauci, Tony to friends, colleagues, and many journalists, has never backed down from controversy. It begins. Just a few quotes here. We talked a lot about this, the editor-in-chief of science and Tony Fauci. We talked a lot about misinformation and the forces sowing doubts about COVID-19 vaccinations and interventions such as masks and lockdowns. Did you? I'd love to hear that. We agreed that one of the biggest challenges with which the scientific community must grapple is misinformation that comes from within. I ran to that like a stone wall at a congressional hearing, he said, describing how his skepticism of an argument put forward by researchers who questioned the necessity of COVID-19 lockdowns was met with admonishment. Quote, you're arrogant because you're disrespecting other scientists, he was told. Fauci's response, quote, you don't want to be disparaging of anyone, but you've got to come back and push against those things that are not true. Like, this is so backwards and upside down. And one more thing, we also talked about how we need to do a better job of conveying that science is a process and not a collection a collection of facts set in stone. No one's on a guy named Anthony Fauci, frankly. Well, like, okay, but like, so- can you, can you believe this guy? I don't like the way they've titled this. I think it really should have been titled, oh, Tony, your science is so big. Science me harder, Tony, or something, right? Be 
<laughs> no, but it's the Christmas season, so I think. All it, right, it, so they it, toned it, it to, down for he, the kids. He, but he, no, he's 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 Christ. I mean, they're making him in. They're, they are. They are, yeah. and you know, well, that's a, that's a that's a promotion because he was just science before, and now <laughs> now he's both. Now he's, he's science and he's, Christ. He's ascended. Mm -hmm. Yes, he has ascended in his uh, stepping down from from his former role. Um, but okay. This is frankly, right, if there wasn't so much riding on all this, this is funny, right? The fact that it, yeah. people cannot help but die from the terrible advice and treatments they're getting makes this utterly ghastly. But yep. the absurdity of it w would be funny otherwise. But I, I wanted to point out, this isn't just the science types and the science journals getting tangled in knots about this and your doctor giving you bad advice. The public... It's not just all of that. It's not just all of that. Yes. What's happened is they have carved out the space to make a completely fictional scientific reality that is not obligated to match anything in the actual real world anymore. <laughs> and everybody who you know signed up for the idea that they were the real scientists is now being carried into this fantasy science world along with them. Mm -hmm. can, can you show the, um, the yeah. Stephen Colbert yeah, clip? Yeah, yeah. Uh, lives. <laughs> so to take full command of the GOP, all DeSantis has to do is reel in the coveted conservative demographic of angry conspiracy QAnon all meat diet tan your testicle boys. <laughs> and his opening offer to all of them is calling for a grand jury investigation of COVID vaccines. Oh. You stupid mother Pfizer. You want an investigation? Let me save you some time and money. In the U.S. alone, the COVID vaccines have saved more than three million lives and helped prevent... <laughs> and helped prevent 18.5 million hospitalizations. And, if that's not enough, and because idiots in your party politicized the vaccine, almost twice as many Republicans died from COVID before the midterms than the Democrats. Y'all killed your own voters. <laughs> it's the stupidest political strategy since the Whig slogan of 1840, tip a canoe and taunt a grizzly. All right, now, that... I think, was it the drummer in the background that they showed? I feel like there was one person in the band, I think the drummer, the, the woman in the background, who did not look thrilled. <laughs> I have well, hopes. I, 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 you have hopes. Yeah. Well, what shocks me about that, I mean, not only has this blog post taken on a life of its own as if it were just true, as if... Well, it did come out of the Yale School of Public I Health. I mean, I guess it did, but yeah. um, not only is it being uh, rendered into this phony reality as if it was actually like three million people alive who otherwise wouldn't be, right? Mm. A complete bit of nonsense. Yep. But the uproarious laughter and applause at this, the idea that this is so transparently correct that this audience of sophisticated people is, you know, ready to just laugh at the beauty of what we've done with these things. Well, it's tribalism and it's dehumanizing. It's, you know, this, this continues, this, you know, blue team loves to argue that it was Trump who turned the American political system into the complete carnival that it is today. That it was, yeah, it was going there and like, you know, Newt Gingrich started in the 90s and all of this and it goes all the way back, but it was really Trump who did it. And they need it now. And I, God, is that the first time I've referred to them as them? <laughs> Maybe, but you know, blue team needs the div division, needs the dehumanization, needs the tribalism in order to keep. <sighs> I don't even know what they're trying to keep. They're Read trying. To, they're trying to keep the power, and the, the fact is, yeah. they actually can't afford not to have the power. Yeah. Because um, what they've done is so dangerous and so harmful, and frankly. If one is allowed to do a proper investigation, it's not that hard to prove, right? These are not, it's not a complicated question at a scientific level. You know, did these so-called vaccines uh, increase the level of all-cause mortality or didn't they, right? That's a relatively straightforward thing to test as, as Christine Stable-Ben has shown.